that's the way it'll be. But if you make up your mind to be happy, you'll be happy. Now I realize there is a tendency to think of happiness as something superficial. But it isn't. It is sometimes attained through peril, toil, and pain that you get the greatest happiness. For example, I have a letter here from a man named Harry DeCamp. Now, I met Harry DeCamp some time ago, a year and a half ago. He lives down in Jersey. He was an insurance man, a, a local politician. And he was a big, husky, uh, rough-looking kind of a fellow. He said he was a believer. He believed in God, believed in the Bible, believed in goodness. But he, uh, he never went to church much. And he wasn't what you call religious. And he was a great golfer. Played golf about three times a week. Had a low score always. Very athletic. Then he got to feeling badly. He went over to the to the hospital, and they put him through some examinations. Sent him up to Sloan Kettering, and they diagnosed him as having a massive cancer behind the bladder. And told him that there uh, wasn't anything they could do for him. That they operated, they would have to cut him in two. So Harry sat staring into a radio, a television set, day after day, saying to himself, I'm uh, going to die. And he lost all his appetite and he began to lose weight. Then somebody sent him a get well card. Have faith in God. He looked at it. He said, who's God? What is God? How can he care anything about me? He got whole universe to look at. But it got to him. Then along comes a copy of Guidepost magazine, which we publish. And it had in it a story about a woman who had the same identical malady. And she was healed. And he read that. Then he thought of an idea, which has now become scientifically highly respectable. Arthur Caliandro gave me a book the other day by Dr. Simonton of Fort Worth, Texas, who develops this idea of imaging and visualization for cancer patients and for all other people who have any other kind of a malady. It's where you don't see the disease, but you see the healing of the disease. You don't see yourself as dying. You see yourself as living. And Dr. Simonton says that as you create these thoughts, you create a resistance to to deterioration in the body. But long before Harry DeCamp had ever heard of anything like that, he got the idea independently. So he sat there and he commanded the white cells, the healthy white cells, to do battle with the unhealthy cells. And he visualized these white cells as cascading down from his shoulder, mortally engaging in combat the unhealthy cells. He said he would do that a hundred times a day. Finally went back to the hospital 
They couldn't find the mass anymore. He'd been a healthy man ever since. I've told you that story in detail before. But we published this story in Guidepost magazine, which has 11 million readers a month. And he writes me this letter. Since my story appeared in Guidepost, I have received many phone calls and letters from all over the USA, all seeking the same answer to a very meaningful question to them, where and what is God? Apparently, these plain folk, some plain millionaires too, seem to relate to me. They feel I'm the plain Joe down the street. They feel and state if, if God healed me, he can heal them too. But they all want to know how. Where is God, they query. What is God, they explain. They plead for answers that they can cope with and understand. They don't want erudite sayings put forth by men of letters, church hierarchy, and TV religious hucksters. They want simple, direct answers. Celebrities shine forth from the covers of most magazines. Also, most healings and miracles are claimed by these same celebrities. The plain, simple person is led to believe God only favors the celebrity class. The pleas of the common folk are pitiful. At least this is the feeling I get from their communications to me. I've talked with a woman lying in bed in the Mayo Clinic, Rochester, Minnesota. The doctors had just told her 30 minutes before that she was going to die of cancer. No hope. I've spoken to an oil millionaire from Texas who also paid me a personal visit. I've spoken to the chairman of boards of corporations. Yes, and I've spoken to people born and raised in, uh, in sod, sod huts. I've spoken to the crippled, the bedridden, the drunkards, the divorced, and on and on. They all wanted to reach God, but don't know how. These people do not know what God is, let alone where he is. It certainly appears to me that the churches are failing in their duty to explain where and what is God in plain, simple, direct language. I've been considering trying my hand at it myself. Really, I've already been foisting my ideas on the Questioners by phone and by letter, they eat it up. They want more and more. It is a shame. The meager source, me, is so limited. Would you believe it? I have a minister in Glendale, California, who phones me every two or three weeks just to talk with me. Before he hangs up, he always asks me for an idea he can use in his Sunday sermon. He usually calls on Friday. I don't blame him. <laughs> and here's the way he concludes this letter. Old Harry D. Camp. I want to help people to find a healing and great happiness like I do. Like I did. You know, friends, the more I see of the Christian religion, the more I am absolutely dead sure that it can solve anybody's problem anywhere, anytime, under whatever condition. It's the greatest thing ever handed down in the history of the human race to men and women. Jesus Christ, their Lord and their Savior, he can do wonders with them. If he can make shadow leaders out of shadow pushers, if he can take a couple on their wedding day and have them decide they're going to be happy, useful, and healthy all their lives long, 